Imperium experiences are back and better than ever. This time they are offering you the chance to win a weekend of a lifetime at the 2022 season finale in Abu Dhabi. This includes a four-night accommodation at a five-star hotel and travel to and from the circuit included every day. All you need to do is click the link down in my description and enter the competition on their website. But hurry, with only 1,500 tickets available and the competition closing on the 14th of September, you definitely don't want to miss out on this. So click the link down in the description below and a massive thank you to Imperium for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here once again with the F1 man. 22 Ferrari Road to Glory. Yes, of course, this is being recorded the evening after the Belgian Grand Prix, and safe to say, this is the only safe place. If you're a Ferrari fan and you don't want to watch a clown show, you've come to the right place once more then. Of course, yeah, we return a massive thank you to all of you for the insane and continued support on the channel. At the time of recording this, we are super close now to 81,000 subscribers. If you're new and you haven't already clicked that subscribe button down below, please do consider it. Trying to hit 100k uh, by the end of the year as well. So yeah, you know, the support, like I said, it's been absolutely insane. You guys are brilliant. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can try and hit 100k by the end of the video. But of course, uh, end of the video, end of the year. If we do it by the end of the video, I'll be very, very impressed. But yeah, this weekend though, we head to the duel in the Formula 1 crown. Charles Leclerc's home race as well. Things are about to get interesting. The Monaco Grand Prix, of course, the one that all the drivers want to win. Maybe, maybe it's where it goes a little bit pear-shaped after I've just hyped myself up in the intro. But, you know, we'll wait and see uh, as of that. In terms, though, of other things going on, that we have got to put a new power unit uh, in Carlos Sainz's car heading into this weekend there. Everything else, the ERS and the gearbox are all all right. But, yeah, we do want to put a fresh power unit in into Sainz's car there. That might mean this weekend he is incredibly quick. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see as to what happens. Anything else interesting, though, going on at this stage of the championship? Again, you know, the board looking very, very comfortable. Of course, the Spanish Grand Prix that went live yesterday morning. Um, Charles Leclerc, let, let's not beat around the bush, he, he dominated it and came across the line and said it was incredibly difficult, despite the fact he was pulling out on average, about three quarters of a second a lap uh, throughout the entirety of the race. It was a dominant display uh, by Charles, and of course, he does lead the championship as we head into this weekend. Championship-wise, there you can see uh, 95 points, uh, sorry, 90, uh, 93 points even ahead of Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship. Drivers' table-wise, Leclerc now has got a 21-point lead over Carlos Sainz, and then Carlos has got a 29-point lead over Max Verstappen there, so 50 points clear of the Dutchman as we head into Monaco. But, yeah, like I said, of course, this is the one that all the drivers want to win. Most definitely, Charles Leclerc is absolutely at the top of that list, so fingers crossed this weekend, things can go well. I have been reading the comments. Some of you have said you don't want me to sort of make Sainz the number two driver. You do want me to let them completely fight. I will take that on board. And let's see what happens then and how quickly that goes badly wrong for us. Cars have been racing through Monaco streets since 1929. And this weekend is no exception. As we get to watch the new generation of world-class drivers take over Monte Carlo. This is the Monaco Grand Prix. Monaco is famous for its many narrow twists and corners. From the brake-heavy Larascas to the treacherous Sand of Oz, there are no proper straights to speak of, and it's extremely hard to overtake here. It sounds like simple advice, but getting up as high on that starting grid as possible is the best plan of attack. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Stay right here because we're just getting started. Right, well, here we are then, back in the Principality. Oh, dearie me. Oh, dearie me. It's going to be a wet, wet race here in Monte Carlo. The first time we're properly going to be dealing with the rain on F1 Manager as well. Things are certainly about to get spicy. But of course, I mean, you need to run basically maximum downforce anyway around this circuit in free practice and qualifying, you know. So setup probably won't change all too much. So I'm pretty much going to whack up the wings uh, immediately there just to sort of see what we can do. Of course, try and gear the car uh, right towards, of course, just being an absolute, you know, just trying to make it as 
best as possible uh, through the corners there is probably the best technical analysis I can probably give. But yeah, we'll follow a pretty normal sort of procedure uh, during free practice here, of course, on Friday and Saturday running, of course, we'll deal uh, with FP1 and then we'll let the team sort of tweak everything uh, that they feel they need to later on in the session. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of made me feel a little bit nervous as we head into Monaco this weekend. We've got no idea how the car's going to really handle uh, in the wet, but I suppose we've just got to get on with it and see what we can do here in practice, first of all. All right, so here we are then. First look at the Monaco Grand Prix on F1 Manager, and I must admit, just like pretty much everything so far in this game, it does look absolutely stunning. The graphics on here are a bit odd to describe, but I know it's sort of a lot of you guys have said as well, you know, this game is very, very beautiful as well. I mean, it certainly makes things, you know, a whole lot easier uh, when I'm recording and commentating over F1 Manager as well. But like I said, you know, we'll run a pretty normal sort of procedure here in free practice, get both drivers out for as many laps as they possibly can. Of course, they're still trying to adapt to the new front wing there. They're pretty confident in that regard. But yeah, we'll let them sort of get on with it and see some feedback at the end of this first run and of course make some setup tweaks as well. I mean, this is immediately the problem at the Monaco Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz have taken all of five minutes uh, to get stuck in a traffic jam there, and it looks like Max Verstappen has actually joined them as well. So not too sure how much valuable data we're going to get uh, underneath the rear wing of an Alpha Tauri all session long. Um, but I suppose it's a good test to, of course, see how difficult it is to overtake around this circuit on F1 Manager. Of course, real life, it's near impossible. Uh, the code is F1 games. It's basically impossible. I'm not saying I expect F1 Manager to be any different, but it might have been a pleasant surprise as that is a beautiful camera shot through the entry to the swimming pool chicane. Update when you can. Yes, guys. Getting better and better. That is exactly what we want to hear there. Car uh, sorry, Charles Leclerc, very, very happy with the setup, despite the fact he's still... 10 minutes later, stuck in this train of cars that Alex Albon uh, now seems to have made himself the front of. Yeah, I mean, well, welcome to Monaco, I guess, is the only thing I can say. You know, for whatever reason, uh, you're watching F1 Manager and you've never sort of experienced real-life Formula 1. This is basically the Monaco Grand Prix weekend for you, in a nutshell. The car is okay. I was not improved. Copy. Right, okay, we, we might have to tweak around Carlos's setup a little bit more then. Charles Leclerc feeling confident and ready around this track. Carlos Sainz, not so much. Well, there we are then, the end of free practice one here from the Principality, and it is Max Verstappen fastest ahead of Charles Leclerc. Yeah, both Leclerc and Sainz, though, we've set them out on a second run on some medium tyres, but yeah, Sainz still not quite struggling. Uh, sorry, still not quite there with the car and still struggling uh, at the moment, but Red Bull look fast here in Friday running. We'll have to wait and see what they look like at the end of practice, but of course we have then got to try and find that balance between do we just set the car up for qualifying and pray that neither driver bins it in the race, or do we try and give them a little bit more of a race-ready strategy and somehow pray they overtake someone on the track in the heavy rain. With FP3 all finished, it's time to move on to qualifying. For those teams hoping to pick up points in tomorrow's race, qualifying is a great opportunity to get ahead of the competition. Whether a driver normally finds themselves as a front runner or a back marker, any advantage they can gain here today is sure to give them an edge. Let the competition commence. Right, well, here we are then, Saturday from the Monaco GP, and those are the sorts of results we want to see at the end of qualifying there, both Ferraris 1 and 2 at the end of free practice 3. Verstappen is still right there, though, only a tenth away, and like I said, qualifying is all just going to be about trying to get a lap in at the right time. Doesn't like we've got too many surprises, though, uh, from free practice, but yeah, let's get into it then. Qualifying here from the Monaco GP. Hopefully both drivers are feeling prepared. You know, we need them to try and get on the front row of the grid. Uh, Sainz still struggling a bit with the setup. It looks like the team, though, have been able to make some tweaks. 
attacks. Um, but yeah, he's still struggling. I'm going to try and give him a bit more wing and hope that's going to make the difference. Let's get both cars out there ready here in Q1. As always, hoping Q1 and Q2 are pretty uneventful for us. It's just about trying to find track space and allowing the drivers to get a good lap in. Here we go then. First runs in Q1 for both Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. They're a little bit closer heading out into the circuit though. I would have liked, but unfortunately we have got now for Tauri just heading out of the pit lane here as we head up the hill. I I had kind of wondered uh, wh whether that might happen immediately here. Um, Sainz does now make his way past him, but I wonder how many cars are not going to be able to get a Q1 lap in here because everyone just spends the entire session blocking each other. Right, let's try this again then with Charles Leclerc here. I've got George Russell just in the way, but fingers crossed the Mercedes isn't going to hold him up too badly. A bit of a blend there on the throttle for Charles Leclerc as we head through the tunnel. But yeah, I want to try and get as many of the good camera angles as I possibly can here from the Monaco Grand Prix. I have to admit, although it's still quite stressful uh, trying to manage Ferrari, it's a whole lot easier sort of watching the cars go around than trying to do it myself and commentate over it. That has often been uh, quite a challenge there. But through the final couple of corners comes Charlotte Leclerc down in towards the Laraskas, of course, at his home race. I'm pretty certain he went to school uh, in one of the buildings just behind Laraskas there down at the final corner. But up towards the checkered flag, Charlotte Leclerc immediately down into the mid 111s. That's going to put him six tenths away, though. From Max Verstappen there. Sainz was purple through sector one. Only green in sector two though. Not too sure how far away he's going to be. It's up towards the line. Um, yeah, not worried about that just now. As Sainz, he'll now go P2 there. Two tenths away from Verstappen. I want to say that's safe enough to get us into Q2. But you never really know around here. Right, well here we are then. Carlos Sainz heading back out onto the circuit with just over a minute left on the clock. And looks like we have been able to get both cars out in front of the rest of the field here. Hopefully, we're not going to see anyone do their best Nico Rosberg impression as we head out of the final corner. But I think the real man to watch out for currently is Sergio Perez down in P16 there. But Carlos Sainz across the line, about to start his final run here in Q1. Nice and tidy through the first couple of corners. We'll just monitor Charles Leclerc as well behind him. I'm still hoping both drivers have got the pace this weekend. You know, like I said, it's always difficult to work out who's been blocked on a qualifying lap and who hasn't and of course by how much uh, they've been blocked on a qualifying lap there but Carlos Sainz just subtly takes this scarlet Ferrari around the Monaco GP. I'll be honest in real life 2022 I honestly thought, sort of looked at this Ferrari through at least the first four or five races thinking that is going to be looked back on as an iconic Ferrari car in the future the one that brings them back to world championship glory I haven't quite felt the same way about their real team, though, as we just kind of waffle on as we watch the cars go around. Charles Leclerc green in Sector 1. Carlos Sainz not improving at the moment. It does go green through Sector 2. There's just a few more corners to navigate then around the lap. We'll actually run on board with Charles Leclerc as he's gone purple uh, through the middle sector. So Charles Leclerc definitely getting up to pace, getting up to speed here as we head through the final couple of turns. Carlos Sainz up towards the checkered flag. Is he going to best Max Verstappen's previous time? No, he is not there, but goes having about a tenth away. Charles Leclerc, on the other hand, does go fastest by 27 thousandths of a second. And that is a brilliant way to end Q1 there. We are very safely through. And into the next session as Sergio Perez does just, only just sneak by into Q2 here. Unless we see other cars improve further back. George Russell is stuck in traffic there, I think, behind Nicholas Latifi as we head through the final couple of corners. As Verstappen's second run is going to be ruined by exactly the same thing there. Up towards the line for these guys. Is Vas uh, sorry George Russell going to somehow improve? No, he does. Yes, he does. Sorry there. As George Russell will go through. That's meant Perez is back right on the cusp of the drop zone. Will Sebastian Vettel improve? Yes, he will. By three thousandths of a second there, Sergio Perez out in Q1 of the Monaco Grand Prix and Red Bull's difficult start to the year just gets even worse. Well, there we go then. Confirmation from Q1. Charles Leclerc fastest by 27 thousandths of a second over Max Verstappen. There, Carlos Sainz in P3. Bottas up in P4 there, but Perez did get relegated there down right at the end of the session, but so did Sebastian Vettel. It was Mick Schumacher, if I'm not mistaken, that improved massively on the final runs there. George Russell only just squeezes through, but heartbreak for Perez, that's going to leave him with a long, long Sunday. 
Again, of course, all you're trying to do as we head out into Q2 is just make sure both cars are in clear track space, but we know as soon as they get down into the 1-minute tens, they should be safely through into Q3 there. That is one thing I would like to see F1 Manager do, is try to implement a little bit more of sort of track build-up, if you will, of course. We've often seen, you know, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz there match their times. Oh, Zhou Guan Yu, right as I was trying to commentate, we'll, we'll go back to Leclerc. And we'll call Carlos back in. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, though, it would be quite nice to sort of see tracks, especially Monaco, of course. It's known for just seeing this massive ramp up as you go through Q2 and Q3. There would be lovely to have that in the game as well, of course. But, you know, for, I mean, like, for a first F1 manager game, this is absolutely insane. You know, you really do think, uh, you know, if they can build on this over the next few years, we have got an absolute worldie of a series on our hands but yeah we'll watch Charles Leclerc then like I said if he gets into the 110s we really don't need him to go for another run here in Q2 and at risk damaging the car there you can just see chucks it down through the fast chicanes here towards the end of the second sector and again back through the Rascats of course yeah Charles Leclerc grew up on these Monaco streets this is I mean it's home for a lot of Formula 1 drivers but this is really home for Charles Leclerc there is a 10-5 that should be him safely through into Q3. Let's just focus then on Carlos. And again, though, I have tried just to time it. So we are the first car out onto a run right at the end of the session there. We haven't really been able to find any better time for Sainz to go out. And currently, he's eight minutes off the pace set by his teammate, Charles Leclerc. We really have brought F1 uh, back into about the 1950s with some mega laps. Or even probably prior to Formula 1, like Targa Florio and things like that. But Carlos Sainz then rounds the final corner, out over the start finish line, and even up through Turn 1. I'm so far behind on the commentary there as he heads up in towards the Casino Square. Let's just see what we can get from Carlos Sainz here on his second run. We'll try and monitor the timings there as he goes green through the first sector, which is reassuring. Uh, to say the least there is, yeah, really hoping we see Sainz nice and safely through into Q3 here. That curb on the inside is absolutely massive on F1 Manager. That is insane. But yeah, as we head down through the tunnel, Carlos Sainz looking very, very fast and racy at the moment. Of course, like I said, fresh engine in the back of the second Ferrari car. I was wondering whether he'd have a bit more pace than Charles Leclerc this weekend. Perhaps we put the engines in the wrong way around. We should have given them both advantages at their home GPs. But Carlos Sainz heads through the final few corners. Green in sector one, green in sector two. Surely uh, this is going to be a lap that sees him through into Q3 there without too many dramatic moments as he rounds through the final corner. Up towards the checkered flag, Carlos Sainz. Surely this is going to be a, a 1 minute 10.641. No, it's a 1 minute 10.6 exactly. I was not far away there at the end of Q2, but it looks like we're not going to see too many major surprises then in the second session. I guess, oh no, Hamilton was in the drop zone there for a brief moment. Now both Mercedes actually into the drop zone here as Lewis Hamilton rounds out of the final corner. Could we see Mercedes out in Q2 for the Monaco Grand Prix? Hamilton across the line. He will improve up to P5. George Russell then down into P13, but he's got clear track space as well in front of him. Barring no errors, it should be Q2. Uh, sorry, into Q3. Yes, it is. But Pierre Gasly actually splits the two Mercedes there. And yeah, again, though, no major surprises out in Q2. I'm sure Esteban Ocon probably a little bit gutted as Verstappen did once again split the Ferraris. I mean, basically qualifying here at Monaco is just trying to pray that other cars don't come out onto the circuit and get in your way there. Speaking of which, it looks like Max Verstappen uh, might just be doing so. But as we head back down through turn one, there, fingers crossed the Dutchman will stay out of the way of Charles Leclerc. I'm not even going to hold my breath. Let's just watch it happen. Definitely, definitely something that needs to get worked on in F1 Manager. To be fair, he's just driven through the wall. Um, but yeah, he has done a lot better than we've often seen so far in this game. Now we've just got to be careful Carlos Sainz doesn't do the same. As, yeah, let's just see. Carlos Sainz there sets an 18.5. Leclerc a 19.3. So eight tenths away uh, in the first sector for Charles Leclerc. Definitely means he's going to need another lap right in the dying stages here of qualifying. But Carlos Sainz, this could be a very, very good lap to try and build up some confidence for him and put the pressure on his teammate and Max Verstappen as we head down through the tunnel. Carlos Sainz, the pressure is on you at the moment, as we've still got Verstappen in the way, though. Please don't say he's going to ruin both of our lap times here. Max Verstappen, he thinks about moving off the line, decides better of it, and does get out of the way on the exit of the swimming pool. So both our drivers have had their laps hindered slightly, um, but we, we might return the favour uh, against Max Verstappen 
when they come to the end of their runs there. Charles Leclerc up towards the line. That is going to only be a low 11 for him. Carlos Sainz, I imagine, is probably going to be around the same sort of pace here. Carlos Sainz, I think, just still dips into the 10s. Um, but, yeah, let's just make sure Verstappen uh, gets a, you know, a taste of his own medicine here. Not, not that I'm toxic on F1 manager at all. But Carlos Sainz, that Ferrari is looking rather wide. And that's what we do like to see. Right, well, everyone back out then on the circuit for the final time here in Monaco Saturday. And by the looks of it, the final time we'll have dry running this weekend. But Charles Leclerc is once more going to be the first man to start his final run there. I'm a little bit worried. We sent both cars out just a tiny bit earlier here just to make sure they did get some clear track space. As well. I reckon that might be the best camera angle uh, to ride on board then with Charles Leclerc on his final qualifying lap here in the Principality. Uh, his teammate Sainz, yeah, three and a half tenths up at the moment, but I think the big one is Max Verstappen, who's currently down in P10 here. If he had a nightmare qualifying, that could work out really nicely for us as Charles Leclerc threads his way through Sector 1 there. Is this going to be purple in Sector 1? No, it's not. Carlos Sainz there, still able to go faster than Charles Leclerc through the first sector as we head down through the hairpin. Of course, slowest speed corner in Formula 1. Is Carlos Sainz going to be able to improve on the time he's already set? No, he does not either. So very, very interesting then. Both drivers still struggling as we stay on board with Charles Leclerc as he heads down out of the tunnel. You see, obviously, all the drivers always complain in real life, but suddenly, of course, the sunlight hits you as you try and sweat your braking point down in towards the end of sector two there through the quick flicker to back fifth gear for Charles Leclerc this time round there as he's still not improving Charles Leclerc cannot find the pace here towards the end of qualifying in the Monaco Grand Prix will it be a first pole position for Carlos Sainz in Formula One there as Sainz is now improving on the exit of sector two Charles Leclerc up towards the flag what time is it gonna be it's still a 10.5 there for Charles Leclerc. Somehow, he must have nailed the final sector here of his qualifying run. But Carlos Sainz up towards the checkered flag. Can he go quicker than his teammate up towards the line? It's incredibly close. Carlos Sainz 37 thousandths of a second away from his teammate there. And that now puts all the pressure onto Max Verstappen here at the end of qualifying. Fingers crossed the Dutchman can improve over our two drivers here. I don't know if we can actually get any timing from uh, Max Verstappen. You can see he was purple through sector one. Hasn't done particularly well, though, in Sector 2. Let's just ride on board, though, uh, with the Dutchman through the final couple of corners, then, of his qualifying run. Will it be Ferrari on pole for a consecutive seventh time this season for Charles Leclerc? Or will Max Verstappen improve? He goes P2, five thousandths away from Charles Leclerc there at the end of qualifying. But once again, we have done it. And once again, Charles Leclerc starts on pole in the Monaco Grand Prix. Surely, surely with our management, this is the best chance he'll ever get here to try and get the win. Absolutely love that though from the team. Carlos Sainz really did deliver at the under qualifying there. Unlucky to start down in P3. But let's get into it then. Monaco Grand Prix time. We might just have made the difference here. But the heavy rain is going to make things very, very interesting. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Drivers are strapping themselves in, ready for race day. Ferrari performed brilliantly during qualifying and will be very pleased with their grid positions. But the challenge for them will be to keep the momentum going during the race. This weekend, Red Bull displayed promise during qualifying. Now they need to capitalize on their grid position and get a good race under their belts. And the weather is sunny here today, apart from a few clouds. Let's hope they remain scattered on the horizon. So as the drivers prepare to weave their way around the streets of Monaco, you have to think, there'll be twists and turns aplenty.
Well, now I'm getting incredibly worried then. The rain isn't here for the start of the Monaco Grand Prix. Let's see if we can get any... We, we can't get any sort of weather report or anything like that by the looks of it, I don't think. We, we don't know what we're heading into then here in Monaco. We could see changeable conditions come Sunday. And like I said, I thought it was going to be heavy rain throughout, but now we're going to have to watch the weather as well, which, yeah, like I said, is certainly going to make things very, very interesting here. In terms of strategy... Do we go long? Here we go. Now we get to have a look at the rain then. So there's a 95% chance of rain. It's then meant to get easier again. Get worse. Get easier. Get worse. Get really bad. Get easier. Get worse. Get better. And get really, really bad again by the end. I've got no idea uh, what that is all about. But we'll yeah, we'll leave them both on medium tyres to start the Grand Prix. There's no point trying to lock a strategy in. Because we could be doing dries, wets, inters, dries, Full wet, snow tyres. I don't really know uh, what's going to happen here in Monaco today. But, you know, I suppose, like I said, we've just got to get into it. This is a real step into the unknown. And for the first time since probably Albert Park, I am feeling incredibly scared. Quite a few clouds overhead as we look at the lineup on the grid. And there's Charles Leclerc. They're in pole position, and they've got to be happy about that. And further back, there's Sainz. They've managed a third-place start for this race, but can they turn it into a win? The race start is mere seconds away. It's time for one of the most exciting races in the world. This is the Monaco Grand Prix. And it's lights out. And away we go! Good start there from Charles Leclerc. That was absolutely critical as we head down in towards Stilmum because I was a bit worried Max Verstappen might be starting on the soft compound tyres. But look at Valtteri Bottas further behind there. Bottas immediately slots up into P3 of the race there. So not what we would have wanted for Carlos Sainz. You can see here both Verstappen and Bottas have started on soft compound tyres here. I'm going to try and make sure that we focus on the weather. But Bottas, let's quickly have a look then immediately on the replay. And just got around the outside of Carlos Sainz there. You'd often think surely Sainz on the inside would just be able to force him out. But Bottas, fantastic traction on the exit of turn one there. And the Finn straight up into P3 in his Alfa Romeo. What an unlikely podium that would be here on the streets, but the team understandably not happy with that one at the start there. Carlos Sainz drops down the order off the grid, but of course it is a very, very long race ahead of us here in Monaco. Can we get any sort of inclination as to what's going to happen with the weather? Apparently not, as we'll watch all the drivers head through the hairpin on lap one. Charles Leclerc, though, just trying to build up a little bit of a gap from Max Verstappen. I'm sure the Dutchman is going to try and apply the pressure early on in this race, but we need science to try and get back past the flying Finn. Because that is not going to help us at all this afternoon. It's, yeah, Charles Leclerc, half a second lead over Max Verstappen. But that gap is coming down as Verstappen gets those soft tyres up into the operating window. But Carlos Sainz, now we need him close to these front two early on. Because we can't afford to watch him just slowly fall back. And of course, therefore, not be useful later on in the day. We'll tell him to go into overtake mode at the end of lap one. Let's see what difference that makes out of the final corner. Here is all over the back of Valtteri Bottas there, and is he immediately going to get the run back down in towards turn one there? Carlos Sainz up the inside of Valtteri Bottas in towards the first corner there. Is the Spaniard going to be able to make the move work? They're side by side as we head up the hill, and no. Sainz has to slot back in once again. Bottas able to utilise those soft compound tyres to get the grip out of turn one, and he will hang on to P3. I guess the other person we've got to probably try and focus on today is just interested to see how much progress Sergio Perez can make as the afternoon goes on. But yeah, already on to lap three though, of course. Everyone settling down, of course. We are expecting uh, quite a lot of weather today. So I think everyone just doesn't want to do anything stupid too early on in the afternoon because it really could be one of those races where anyone could finish anywhere. But Charlotte Leclerc just controlling the pace at the front of the field ahead of Max Verstappen. Carlos Sainz still stuck looking at the back of the Williams. Let's tell him to go full on attack mode uh, down through the final couple of corners once again then. So we'll try and ride on board with Carlos Sainz. That's surely, but well, this time round, you can try and make the move work there. He's just got so much speed. Bottas, though, again, able to hang on as Carlos Sainz is going to have a look up the inside through to someone. Now they're going to be wheel to wheel as we head up the hill. And this time round, Carlos Sainz, brilliant driving, gets himself back up into P3 of the Grand Prix. Let's get him back harvesting some energy. And now he's got to try and close up the gap to the top two. As you can see, Leclerc 
Still under pressure from Max Verstappen behind there, but that was a fantastic and critical move. Bottas, though, I'm sure enjoying being up in P3 at the start. And it really does look like that Alfa Romeo was sitting comfortably around the Principality here. But, yeah, surely it's not going to be enough against a Ferrari. At the end of lap 6, then, I have told Charles Leclerc just to be very, very aggressive uh, with his defending here from Max Verstappen. Like I said, of course, the Dutchman starting on the soft compound tyres there. We probably will see a transfer of pace over the next few laps, but the clouds are definitely getting more and more overcast here around Monaco. But, yeah, when is the rain going to arrive? And if it's after Max Verstappen, of course, has to pit, he can come out in a lot of traffic. Like I said, I think most cars uh, did still start on the medium tyres. They can see, yeah, it is just him, Bottas, Norris, Mick Schumacher, Perez, and Latifi. So Red Bull really pulling all their eggs into the rain arriving quite quickly basket. Uh, but yeah, Verstappen though still very, very fast. And I'm sure, yeah, won't give Charles Leclerc any rest early on in this race. As Sykes has though, goes right up to the back of the pair of them almost immediately. Heading out of the final corner then. Let's just quickly see uh, what Carlos Sykes can try and do against the Max Verstappen. Against the Max Verstappen? Against Max Verstappen here. He has got the best seat in the house uh, to watch this battle unfold. Um, I think, yeah, what we'll actually do is we'll tell him just to save a little bit for now. Um, because, I mean, yeah, if Verstappen still gets stuck behind Leclerc, we could try and get Sainz to pounce on him at some point here. Of course, we've said it many, many times before this season, but it is two against one early on here in Monaco. As, are we just seeing the first spots of rain around the circuit here on just lap nine of the race? It suddenly gets a whole lot darker. And there we go. There is rain coming. So things are about to get very, very interesting here. And I have got no idea when the right time to pit will be. Is Charlotte there, there just slightly offline on the exit into the hotel, but nothing to worry about. I mean, at the moment, we're just trying to gauge how quickly the rain is starting to fall here, and it does look like it is going to arrive very, very quickly uh, this afternoon. But of course, yeah, it really is just now a guessing game of when will be the right time to commit to a set of the intermediate tyres. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like it was a bad call then from Verstappen to start on those softs. I think it is going to get very, very damp very, very quickly. But yeah, it's just about whether we try and pit and guess when Verstappen's going to come in, whether we try to undercut him. I don't really know here. Things could be about to go pear-shaped. Or, on the contrary, we, we don't do a Ferrari. Oh, oh, we got a safety car. What's happened? Lap 12 of this race, Mick Schumacher out of the Grand Prix there. Now will it be the time? It's surely not damp enough yet uh, to do anything. We will ignore the call to come to the pit lane. We want track, uh, track um, position, sorry as much as possible. What happened to Mick Schumacher then? Down at turn one, the Haas car behind the McLaren in towards the first corner and just, oh, locks the rears. Very, very late on into the braking zone there, but Mick Schumacher out of the Monaco Grand Prix and are we now going to see some pitters? Don't really worry too much about seeing Haas there, but yeah, are we going to see Max Verstappen then into the pit lane as Bottas was sticking to the back of this front group like glue? for a couple of laps here, but surely it's not worth boxing if the track is going to get very, very damp very, very quickly. The team is saying there's a 95% chance of rain uh, inside the next two minutes. But yeah, Verstappen stays out. Looks like everyone behind uh, is staying out. Um, yeah, too early for anyone to make the call. Unless you're right at the back of the field, it might be worth trying to take a punt. You know, if you're an Albon or Latifi, even a Perez, really, it might be worth trying something different. Um, but yeah, the team just confirming there is rain on the horizon. And things are starting to get a little bit squeaky there. You can see a lot more drizzle around the circuit. Is it now going to be time to pit under safety car? I think we're going to have to watch, see if, you know, the likes of your Strolls or your Alex Albans box from the rear of the field. Are we going to see any of them peel into the pit lane? No, we are not. Could Nicholas Satifi try and brave it? I mean, surely we're not far away. As you can just see there, rain is certainly falling on the circuit. The track is getting damp. It has happened. Luckily, it has happened under safety car. But everyone really now immediately struggling for grip. I'm going to do it. I'm going to box Charles Leclerc in at the end of this lap there. We are going to tell Charles Leclerc in onto a set of intermediate ties here. And I want to say the same to Carlos Sainz. I don't want to screw him. But I am worried about putting our eggs in one basket here as the track is definitely starting to get a little bit damper. All I'm thinking is, of course, by the time the safety car does box in is yes! Verstappen is in as well. Everyone is coming into the pit lane. So I haven't completely messed that up there. We might see Carlos Sainz lose a bit of time, but with a bit of luck, he'll actually hold Verstappen up 
in his pit box as well here. So Verstappen won't be able to go anywhere. We're all going to get queued up in the pit lane. Could this leave Bottas out? George Russell is into the lead. Hamilton, though. Sorry, George Russell. Is that Hamilton? Is that Russell? I don't know. Leclerc's been jumped by Max Verstappen. How on earth have we allowed that to happen in this Grand Prix there? I think Bottas has actually got the jump on everyone, though Bottas is still stuck in the pit lane as well. So the grid is now all completely mixed up here. We have still got Lewis Hamilton is into the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix for Mercedes. Perez, for whatever reason, hasn't pit, so he's now out in the middle of this gaggle of cars there. Sainz is down to P14. It is still early on in this race, and of course we will see a lot of cars into the pits. But Hamilton and Verstappen are on full wet. Oh, dearie me. We're out on Inters. And Verstappen and Carlos, uh, sorry, and Lewis Hamilton. Track condition has changed to wet. We might have just pit onto the wrong tyre here, and we might have to box in again. And early on, the tyres are too warm. What, what on earth have we done here? We're going to have to box them both again at the end of the very next lap. Oh no, I thought I nailed it in terms of strategy. But everyone else coming straight onto the full wets there. It's certainly heavy rainfall, but... Wait, the team now is saying there's going to be less rain in just a minute. We, we're going to cancel that. We are going to cancel that pit stop. Can I cancel uh, this pit stop? Yes, I can. I'm I'm going to keep them out here for now, especially under the safety car. I don't think this, this re heavy rain period is going to last too long. We might then have a big, big advantage. This is incredibly scary. Safety car in at the end of this lap, so all the front runners are going to be completely screwed in this Grand Prix there. So we're going to ride on board with George Russell at the front of the field there. So they're all going to have to pit now. And effectively, we've got a free stop over all of them. But how will Charles Leclerc fare there as we're trying to close up to the back of the train? George Russell is going to peel into the pits. This is madness here in Monaco. As George Russell back into the pit lane at the end of that lap there. Every one of the front runners in. Lewis Hamilton has opted to stay out. We're getting held up behind Sergio Perez in the way. But what is the gaps going to be? between Verstappen and Charles Leclerc here. Is Verstappen now going to try and apply the pressure to Lewis Hamilton? Is Charles Leclerc going to be able to close in? No, he is not. We are under so much pressure from the cars behind, and we've got to pray that the track starts to dry up there. I mean, it's not really even raining anymore, but Charles Leclerc still on those intermediates. Is he struggling? Yes, he is. We are losing time to the cars in front there, but seeing that, science, he's trying to apply pressure to the cars in front. Bottas is trying to apply pressure. I have got no idea what's happening here in Monaco, but Charles Leclerc is going to have to try and push like crazy, but we cannot afford a mistake from the young Monagas driver at his home race, but we have got to pray that the rain stops quite soon, because it might, like I said, just be worth staying out here and holding the rest of the field at bay. And there we go, just at the end of lap 15, the track is already starting to get a little bit drier here. We have lost a lot of time on this lap. I'm not going to try and argue that, but the rainfall is dropping. And therefore, surely, we're going to see these tyres start to move back towards us over the next couple of laps. But again, it's whether we lose a whole pit stop in that time. Oh, there we go. End of next lap. No, no, Hamilton and Verstappen, sorry, aren't in just yet. I've got no idea what's happening here in Monaco. This is certainly going to be a, probably the craziest race we get of the year there. You can see Charlotte Lowe, though. The gap has leveled out. It's actually starting to come down again in a few places. So I think we are back over at the crossover point. And this could accidentally work out brilliantly for our two drivers. Has anyone else opted on Twinters? No, they have not. But yeah, now Charles Leclerc might turn back towards the fastest car on the circuit. The gap is staying pretty level, but surely this is just going to come towards us. As no, the track's getting wetter again. What on earth is happening here in Monaco? The track now is starting to get more and more damp once more. It got drier for a lap, and now suddenly the rain is getting heavier again. Do we box? I honestly do not know at this stage of the day. We're going to leave Sainz out, but we're going to bring Charles Leclerc in at the end of this lap because I've got no idea as to what is happening. No, we're actually going to do the opposite of that. We're going to cancel that on Charles Leclerc. We're going to try it on Carlos Sainz. I apologise to those of you that think I'm screwing Sainz in this championship, but we have to get some data on what's going on with the tyres, but I've got no idea what is happening in this race. As the track, yeah, just seems to be ebbing and flowing between slightly drier and slightly wetter. But of course, it was Ayrton Senna that said to win Grand Prix, you have to be on the right tyres at the right time there. So we are going to bring Carlos Sainz back into the pits there. I think he's probably going to re-emerge uh, a little bit further down the order, hopefully ahead of the Aston Martin of Sebastian Vettel. But yeah, this is a real, real test of our skills as an F1 manager here. And so far, 
It's not looking swimmingly for us. The track is looking swimmingly as Carlos Sainz now is going to re-emerge down in P16 of this race. But he is on a set of the full wet tyres. And now we can try and monitor pace between them as Leclerc. He still isn't losing a huge amount to those cars in front. But the track is getting a lot wetter incredibly quickly. And there we go. Again, the track conditions have changed to wet as we get to one quarter distance of the Monaco Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc, now the gaps are really starting to go up again. But I can't really afford to box him. He's going to come out in so much dirty air that we've just kind of got to keep him out here and pray that he doesn't stack it, to be honest. Because Charles Leclerc, he is doing a fine job at defending. I mean, Alonso can't get around him, but Hamilton and Verstappen are just pulling away at the front of the field here, as this is an almighty queue forming behind Charles. As, oh, there we go. Fernando Alonso has found a way around Charles Leclerc here. And let's have a look at that one just on the replays. And I think, yeah, Leclerc's losing a huge bag of time now. You can see Alonso still very, very tentative on the throttle as they head back down towards Stelmont, but Leclerc can't do anything about it. And now I'm worried we're going to start leaking positions in this Grand Prix like a sieve. Oh, no, I'm just watching Leclerc as he's now going to lose another place to Pierre Gasly. I hate this. I hate this. We're going to have to box him. We are going to have to box Charles Leclerc in this Grand Prix. He's just going to keep losing places. And suddenly this race has become a disaster there. As you can see, I think that's Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, sorry, no, uh, George Russell. And, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo going side by side. Down into the back. Surely that's not going to win well between the pair of them. Somehow they make that work through the chicane. And they're still side by side down in towards the final sector here. This has got to go pear-shaped at some point for at least one of them, but somehow they're making it work as everyone is just stuck behind Charles Leclerc as he heads back into the pit lane here. And Well, I hyped myself up prior to the race, but it looks like we are now the clown show down at Ferrari. Here is Charles Leclerc. Hopefully he's going to get a fairly clean, tidy stop. I mean, he's going to re-emerge right down at the rear of the field. And for the first time this year, Ferrari at the moment have completely messed up this strategy as everyone else just staying out on the full wet. So Leclerc is going to be back out in 18th place of this race. As track now starting to slowly get a bit drier once more, we've got to try and make sure Leclerc can still try and move past cars as best as possible. I mean, 18th place is looking pretty dire at the one third distance of this race. But if you can try and start slipping past other cars once more, you know, this thing is still very, very quick now. It's up past Albon. We go as we head down in towards Turn 1. I've got to try and make sure we do the same uh, with Carlos Sainz as well. But I think there's going to be a lot of micromanagement this afternoon between our two drivers. Uh, so, yeah, let's see if we can try and get Sainz past Zhou Guan Yu. Right, we are just going to keep telling both drivers to attack at the end of each lap there. But I'm a little bit worried already. Sergio Perez just in front. Might be very, very difficult to navigate there. As up the inside goes Carlos Sainz back in towards Turn 1. Is Charles Leclerc close enough to Lance Stroll? He probably would have been close enough to have a go. Um, but yeah, we have just got to pick these cars off one by one and try and time the moves. And let's see then if Charles Leclerc can make another one happen out of the final corner. All over the back of Lance Stroll and his Aston Martin. And I think the Canadian is basically giving us the, plate, uh, the place there on a silver platter. And Charles Leclerc now back up into 16th place. They're not too far behind his teammate. But 14th and 16th. Oh, Monaco, what have you done to me? A bit of a test then. See if Sainz uh, can try and move past Sergio Perez in this Grand Prix. As well, actually try and do the same with Charles Leclerc just behind him. Get a good view, hopefully, of what both drivers are doing as we head out through the final corner. Carlos Sainz, though, all over the back of Sergio Perez. The track, once again, seemingly is getting slightly drier here. It's back down in towards someone. No, Perez can't make anything happen. Charles Leclerc can't make anything happen behind either. And now we've got to get them both to start harvesting. I think we might have just have to settle down for a few laps and just sort of see how the rain affects things. And now the team is saying the track's actually getting damp again. But again, I don't think it's worth doing anything at the moment. As Zhou Guan Yu still now right up behind this gaggle of cars there. Can we now get Charles Leclerc to get a run on him out of the final corner? No, Leclerc just doesn't have enough battery at the moment to do anything. So we will set them both up to harvest then. Just settle in for a few more laps. Like I said, see what happens with the rain. Of course, we did get completely screwed by that last stint because I thought suddenly we made an inspired call to stay out on intermediates. And it turned out not to be the case as El Plan is currently up in the podium places and Hamilton is leading the Monaco Grand Prix. That doesn't sound so odd, but based on the weekend Hamilton had at Spa, that's highly unlikely. So here we go then, lap 34, almost the halfway stage of the Grand Prix. Both drivers now starting to get a little bit worried about 
the intermediate so i mean we've got fresh sets we may as well just burn them all up uh, as the afternoon goes on but yeah hamilton and verstappen not opting to peel into the pit lane just yet leclerc certainly wants to um but is the track then going to get wet again i mean we're, we're 16th place does it matter all too much at the moment Sykes clearly not doesn't want to come in just yet once more um, but now I'm worried that the track's suddenly going to get damper again. And the clear is once more going to get screwed in this race. But, I mean, like I said, we're down in 14th and 16th. We may as well use this race as a learning curve as much as anything else there. Um, but, yeah, still a lot of rain around the venue. But, yeah, apparently it's getting drier and drier once more. I wish. I'm sure. I'm going to say all this today. I'm going to say I wish there was a way you could properly view the weather. Um, but there probably is and I just haven't found it and then you guys are going to tell me in the comments and I'm going to look like a moron again. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Charles Leclerc's in. He is into the pits. He has boxed once more here and whether this is going to be basically the end of his afternoon there, as long as he stays on the lead lap, of course, that just means if you get a safety car, he's not completely down and out. But Charles Leclerc was worried about tyres overheating, so we have boxed as he wished. Um, but now we're going to have to monitor the gaps once more. Oh! Why? Why? Why, Charles? Did you moan? We're going to have to box him again. Charles Leclerc, what's this going to be? His third or fourth pit stop here in Monaco? Why does he keep telling me that he wants to change tyres or keep hinting at it? Charles Leclerc is just... I mean, I, I don't want to put all the blame on him here, but he is telling me these things, and already, again, he's going to be a lap down. It's all but over for Charles Leclerc. Again, the Monaco Grand Prix curse absolutely continues. And I cannot believe I allowed myself to get hyped up uh, ready for this race here in Monaco. It's back to the full wets once more. We're not even at the halfway stage of the race. And Charles Leclerc's afternoon is just going from bad to worse to somehow even worse. I mean, we desperately need science to try and get around Sergio Perez in this race there. Because Perez is just stuck behind Sebastian Vettel. At the moment, is out of the final corner. Once more we go. Is Perez going to be able to try and get a run? No, he is not. Sainz just can't do anything, though, uh, behind the Red Bull as we head back down in towards the first corner. But, yeah, surprised we haven't seen more mistakes today. I suppose it's testament to how good Formula 1 drivers are. Um, but, yeah, Charles Leclerc's afternoon is basically completely in the bin. I'm not going to try and trust the track conditions changing ever again on F1 manager, but yeah, Perez still stuck behind Vettel, and I mean, this is just absolute Monaco in a nutshell. 37 laps to go here, and it's not looking like we're going to score any points. I'll, I'll, I'll hand in, I mean, I'm going to get my P45 from Ferrari. It's absolutely a given after this weekend. What a nightmare. Well, I guess now the only other thing we can try and be really cheeky with is Hamilton and Verstappen are both coming up to lap the second of our cars. Yes, Sainz and Leclerc are both about to be a lap down in this race, but I hope we can be a little bit cheeky here and try to get Sainz uh, around Sergio Perez through Hamilton lapping him. Let's just watch on board and see what happens here, as I'm sure Verstappen uh, will try and do the exact opposite. Sainz, oh, here we go. Leclerc making places, though, still. I mean, we're not even controlling him at the moment. Is up the inside goes Charles Leclerc down at turn one. Lance Stroll gives him the racing room, which you can't say every time uh, with the Canadian there. They both sort of um and are about it, but Leclerc does sneak by. I can't imagine the team is celebrating too much because it's still only for P16. Um, but yeah, Sainz just trying to defend... Uh, sorry, trying to sort of see what happens there. As there we go. He's, he's going to let Hamilton and maybe Max Verstappen by. He's going to sit in the way of Max Verstappen there. I mean, it could be really useful if Hamilton did walk away with the race victory, and Sainz has done us a worldie in that moment. Oh! Sainz! You can't really do that, mate. There's doing us a worldie, and then there's making it look just a bit too obvious in this Grand Prix. There is, is he still side by side? No, he's not. He has slotted in now behind, but yeah, that has given Perez and the other cars a little bit of a gap there, so I'm not convinced that's worked out too great for Carlos here with 30 laps to go in Monaco, but yeah, track's still very, very wet. It's Hamilton now all over the back of Sergio through the final couple of corners. Can we, like I said, somehow make this work for us, as we're still telling Sainz just to go for it. We'll have to bring it back down in to neutral there. Perez jumps out of the way of Lewis Hamilton. I'm sure he's going to jump out of the way of his teammate there. Can Carlos Sainz make it happen? No. No, he cannot. Am I too surprised? No, I probably shouldn't be. As heading in towards the final quarter of the Monaco Grand Prix. I, I hate to be too cynical here, um, but thing, things aren't looking good for us. I don't think there's really a lot to talk about at the moment. 
The track's not getting any drier. The track's... Well, I mean, he's getting wetter again suddenly. Um, but certainly not enough that's going to change the tyre compounds as Perez now lets through El Plan. Sights again, though. Can't make anything happen through it. Or is he going to be able to try a send down in towards the chicane? No, he's not. Um, but yeah, 21 laps to go here from Monaco. This has been, without a shadow of a doubt, a absolute disaster show. Uh, here in Monaco, and of course, like I said, the first time I properly hype it up on F1 Manager, it goes catastrophically wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, the final 20 laps here, I think Perez is just going to be in the way of Carlos Sainz, the chequered flag, and Le Leclerc might get stuck behind Joe Guanyu. We might tell him just to go for it. I wish there was a button for like a YOLO attempt uh, of an overtake as well. There, can we get Leclerc to shift his way past Joe Guanyu down through out of the final corner once more? Let's wait and see as we get down into the breaking zone of turn one. No. <laughs> no, no, we can't again. I mean, let's be fair. There's a fair chance now. Uh, we're we're going to skip forward pretty much right to the checkered flag here because I don't think a lot else is going to happen. Ooh, okay. Team's saying now no more rain in the Grand Prix. There is still a little bit of spray being kicked up. I mean, it's probably not going to make much difference for us as we're still stuck down in the midfield. But they're also saying there's a 95% chance of heavy rain in just a moment, as Hamilton now has lapped his teammate George Russell here. Hamilton's still leading the way with 10 laps to go. What an unlikely race victory this is going to be for the Mercedes, man, if he can hang on ahead of a very feisty Max Verstappen. Go on! Charles Leclerc's just gained two places. What's happened here? Charles Leclerc ran the outside of Zhou Guan Yu into the chicane there. Sainz gets squeezed out. And Leclerc says thank you very much there. Gets two places for the price of one. And something has happened. For one of our cars, it's a shame it just so happened to screw the other. Team, there, them team loving that, even though it was Leclerc and Sainz just overtaking each other. Not not too sure. You know what? Six laps to go in the Monaco Grand Prix. Track getting now basically dry. We're going to bolt both cars <laughs> in the final few laps here. It's kind of the whole thing of we've got absolutely nothing to lose. And even if they can just try and take the fastest lap bonus point away from Max Verstappen once more, then we may as well go for it here. Charles Leclerc will re-emerge still in P15 by the looks of it. And let's hope this Ferrari is absolutely rapid late on because, I mean, we could, by some miracle, somehow squeeze a point out of this, but we're going to have to be about 10 seconds a lap faster than anyone else late on. And let's just see whether that is the case. Charles Leclerc, how far back is he? Please say he's out ahead of that Aston Martin. Come on. Yes, he is. And he is going to be 20 seconds behind Zhou Guanyu. Let's hope that... Oh, it's not even going to come down. The track's too wet. I, I mean, am I surprised I couldn't make the right call again? Am I really surprised? Please just track dry out by the end. I, I desperately need anything. Anything from this race. So then, three laps to go at the Monaco Grand Prix. And we're now in a weird situation. Well, I don't think anyone else really wants to pit in this race. Because they're so worried about losing track position. And of course, if everyone stays out on the, in the full wet... No one really loses out. Our two drivers now are the fastest cars, I think, on circuit. But Hamilton and Verstappen, do they pit late on? I mean, if I was Verstappen, I'd just do the opposite of Hamilton here and stay... Well, if Hamilton obviously boxes, you stay out. If you stay out... Uh, sorry, if Hamilton stays out, you box. But yeah, Lewis Hamilton here. Three laps to go the Monaco Grand Prix. Things are getting very, very weird, though. Uh, but we are mighty fast on the circuit. I mean, look at this now. With two laps to go, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz are all over the back of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in this Grand Prix there. I mean, I'm going to let him race. I, we've got enough to lose and everything to gain at this stage of the afternoon. And this could get very, very weird in the final couple of laps here. I mean, at least we're going to be uh, in the winning photo celebrations, I suppose. Can the AI unlap themselves on F1 Manager? I'm really, really not too sure at the moment, but... I mean, if you don't laugh, you cry on this game there. And it is the first time this year things have really not gone well for me. But it's a learning curve at the end of the day. And, well, yeah, we have embraced the Ferrari clown show this weekend of boxing your tyres on... Boxing your car, sorry, onto the wrong tyres here late on in the afternoon. We've got yellow flags out. Someone's binned it late on in the day. That's Yuki Sonoda. Let's see what's gone on for Lil Yuki. Where has he... Oh, don't say he's done a Senna down at Portier. Yuki Sonoda has done a Senna down at Portier. And maybe that means three World Championships and, what, six Monaco Grand Prix victories are on the line for Yuki in the future. But it's not going to be this weekend, as that might mean we do gain a spot late on in the race. I mean, Sonoda 
He was running up just outside the points there, but Charles Leclerc, is he going to be able to get the run on Verstappen? You know what, let's tell him to go for it on the final lap of this race there. Let's go full boost mode, everything on for both Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz here for the final lap of the Monaco Grand Prix. It's been an absolute disaster for ourselves, but you know what, that's the way Formula 1 goes sometimes, and I'm just going to sit back and smile because the Monaco Grand Prix has once again delivered a crazy, crazy race here. And Lewis Hamilton rounds the final in a few corners. It was always meant to be Red Bull that would stop the Ferrari run this season. I don't think Hamilton ever thought for a moment, starting P5 on the grid for this Grand Prix, that he would spend pretty much the entirety of it leading. And it was Ferrari that basically handed it to him on a silver platter because, of course, we held up Max Verstappen in the pit lane which has allowed Hamilton to try and win this race. There's Charles Leclerc up the inside of Verstappen on the final lap of the Grand Prix there. He might lose the place to Carlos because of it there, but Charles Leclerc absolutely going for it still on the final lap. But Hamilton rounding the final few corners. His streak of winning at least one race in every year he's completed in Formula 1 is set to continue in 2022 and it's on the one they all want to win Hamilton already if I'm not mistaken a three time winner around the Principality and in 2022 he is going to make it for Lewis Hamilton wins the Monaco Grand Prix there ahead of Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso El Plan will come through for P3 big big points for the likes of Gasly Bottas and even Kevin Magnussen as well in his Haas car, but Hamilton, once more, is a Grand Prix winner. Here's the replay, and at the end of that final lap, Hamilton has secured the win. And that's what happens when you drive with such skill and passion. They barely put a foot wrong. I imagine Charles Leclerc must be feeling rather deflated after this race. It was a poor show from Ferrari here. Things just didn't go their way. Look, today's strategy certainly didn't work for them, but they have time to revisit and re-strategize for next time. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. Next time, the teams will be racing through the streets of another city. Join us in Baku on the shores of the Caspian Sea for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I mean, <laughs> what what more could we say there at the end of the Monaco Grand Prix? An absolute disaster. And I even put a, a message out on our community tab yesterday going, if you want to watch straps where Ferrari win, um, then this is the place to be. I look like such a moron now, and I'm so, so sorry to all the Ferrari fans uh, that have had to go through a very, very realistic experience uh, this weekend. I mean, look at that. Hamilton up four places, Alonso Gasly up three, Bottas unfortunately lost one, Ricardo up seven, Charles Leclerc minus 14, Carlos Sainz minus 13, two laps down at the check and flag there. Yeah, I, I'm so, so sorry uh, to the Ferrari fans out there. Championship-wise, though, has made things a bit interesting. Max Verstappen uh, gains 18 points on both of our cars at the end of the weekend. Hamilton up to P4 ahead of Sergio Perez. Alonso up into P8. Gasly up to ninth there, both jumping past Esteban Ocon. And Kevin Magnussen gets his first points of the year now up into P10. Alonso gets relegated now just a couple of points ahead of his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. And Sonoda uh, now on count back up into P15 after a, a disastrous Spanish Grand Prix uh, last time out. Constructors-wise, though, again, Red Bull, of course, take out some points on us overall in that championship. Mercedes still P3 ahead of Alfa Romeo. That doesn't look like they've had any movement in the constructors. Just Alpine close up a big, big haul of points uh, closing in to Alfa Romeo there. But, yeah, I think the less said about that race weekend, the absolute better for ourselves. Thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. And we will return tomorrow night in Azerbaijan. Fingers crossed, things can turn around for the better. Otherwise, all the Ferrari fans are going to leave me forever. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.